Hello everybody and welcome back to Newbie USA Gaming. Um, my normal go-to is uh, streaming on Twitch. Um, and I don't want you to find this video weird because it's coming out of nowhere. But like I do play Satisfactory quite regularly as well. And since the 1.0 release is around the corner, I thought I might give you a preview of the stuff that I've been working on for the last few years. So it's like the very first one... The very first map I made um, or played on, I tried to make a mega factory and I used a couple of mods to build that mega factory. Never got around to finishing it because I ended up st starting to play Destiny and like that kind of took up my time. Towards the end of last year, I started getting back, excuse me, back into Satisfactory. Um, so what I wanted to do today was to show you what I've been working on since then. So I've got 500 hours on that save. I've got 500 hours on a pre on the previous, I think, big factory save. Um, and I've been following a couple of people on YouTube as well, just to try and get some ideas and inspiration from those things. I haven't actually ever finished the game, so I'm hoping that in 1.0 I can finish it. Uh, but anyway, before we get any further, let's jump right in. I'll show you the save that I have. So, well, a couple of the saves. I'll show you the Mega Factory, which is the first one I worked on. That was the one that I gave up on. Ooh, I don't know quite a few years ago I think just before Destiny 2 came out I think that was still around update 5 and then um, I've got a new save which I've been working on since last year I think uh, about 500 hours into that and then I was just like kind of getting my feet wet again and getting back into the game and trying to understand how to build stuff and like structuring things and and then the third save is basically just like testing out um sort of the green valley area to see what the best way to start in that area is because uh, i think that's where i want to start depending on how um things go it's nice it's open it's flat and i like the vegetation and stuff around there um i know there's not a lot of resources in that area all the basic resources are there and the nodes aren't like pure but there are a couple of things that are a benefit in that area but anyway let's jump right in and um we'll get going and i can show you what i have Okay, so prep start two, that was like, that's my most recent save. All right, that's the one that I've been working on. Um, Eden Prime is that, that's what Darren plays. In Inidwaith was like one that I started in a different area. I just wanted to test out the area, so I didn't get very far on it. Um, Gate World, yeah, so this is another save from another YouTuber. Um, I'm trying to remember his name now. I think it starts with an A. Another British kid. Very kind of design orientated, that world. Um, I think. Valerium. Oh, this is the this is the most this is the one that I've been working on since last year. And then test <laughs> egg factory. So yeah, you can see 574 hours kind of like a long time. So we'll jump into this one and you can have a look at that. I'm just going to give you like a quick tour of all these worlds. There's not a lot in them. Um, like I said, uh, most of the stuff I didn't actually automate or get to, whatever it is. Like, I didn't finish a lot of the stuff in here. But, like, I mean, maybe there's some ideas and tips. But I want to take all of these ideas and things that I used in, in, these, in these saves and take them over to Satisfactory 1.0. Um, okay, yeah. So where we're starting out here is... So you can see here as well, like where I've got these power stations just sticking out with no roof. This is in one of those times when uh, I think it was update 5, I think, maybe update 6. And there wasn't really like, there wasn't anything that you could do to like put a roof over a power station. But these, this is like my power station setup. I think there's like 32 power stations there. Um, got some water pumps over here. So you can see over here, I'm using foundations as a roof, which isn't ideal. So that was because of the, uh, the version that we were on. But here I got a bunch of these dudes and I tried to pump as much water as I could down here, but I still kept on having issues with fluids, right? So you can see pipe is full, pipe is full, right? You go over here. Pipe is full. Pipe is full. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There you go. Look at that. 
So 600 pipe is not full, right? Um, even though the flow says 600, it immediately drops. I think it was like, where was it? Somewhere. It used to be here. It might be fixed. But the fluid, um, like the full 300 doesn't actually go all the way to the end. So you can see how I did these pipes. I stacked them on top of each other. And then would drop a pipe when I didn't need it. So there's a closeout. The pipe would drop down to the next drop. Boop, boop. And then start feeding those stations over there. But if we have a look here, it's struggling. And most of these would stop. You can see like it runs out of fluid, which is weird. I don't know why. Everything is like, it should be perfectly balanced. It's got all the right pipes. It's got the right amount of pumps and everything. It's all going downhill. Anyway, so this was the power station for this particular world. Prior to this power station being there, there used to be like a whole setup that I had here that was using or here on these ends over here. That was using the oil coming from the opposite side. This is a Caterium setup over here. I'll take you guys to the bottom as well so you can see what was down there originally. Boop. And so like I like to do this with my miners. I like to kind of enclose the belts wherever they're going. Um, right now this guy's got nothing happening. Go down here. Oh shit. So yeah, like this used to be like a mega factory. This is where I was gonna build a mega factory. And then I changed the location. So I had to like shift everything from this factory to a different one. Oil, yeah. So this is probably leftover oil from the oil that I had like up there. Well, I had water up there, I think. And then I had oil in these little pockets here. So the oil would go down here and go across and feed machines that were over there. So that's residual oil. This train station is one that would pick up the um what did it pick up? The Caterium. So pick up Caterium and drop it off at like the mega factory. This is like a loop that it would do. Um if you go to the bottom over here you got you can start to see how like i had all of this stuff structured so all the machines were, were at the top and i had these massive belts that were circle belts in fact i could probably load up an older save like a 200 hour save and you'd be able to see all those belts but i changed everything over now to be coal so you can see all of these things are empty and all of these things will have coal because right? um, i wanted my power stations to be here um, and then this train used to bring in coal as well. But then I stopped running at a train station and I found these um, resource teleporters as a mod. And I used those because it was just easier than having to like logistically transport everything. But then it distributes the coal across all of the power stations. But prior to this being here, like I said, there used to be a mega factory. Let me see if I can load up a previous save. Show you that mega factory. 257. Maybe 257. Maybe 257. Try that one. See what happens. Oh, this is when I started building out the big one. Yeah. So this is like, this is the point at which I started wanting to build the mega factory. This is the area that it's going to be in. Um, I'll show you that.
I'm going to see if the other mega factory is still alive. Might be able to show you how the couple Kind of weird coming back to your old saves and having a look at these things. <laughs> There's some kind of coal. Yeah, I think there's a coal. Yeah, I'm also didn't like when I first started this game, I didn't know the benefit of the recipes. So I didn't know which ones to choose. Pretty sure I got car screws a few times. The amount of time that I spent doing this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. The copper, half, half copper. What do they call those things? Like a a mining out, not outcrop, but like a. Man, I can't remember. They they use it in science fiction a lot. Oh yeah, look at this glorious belts. So you can see here, this is the system where I had all the belts. So you can start to see over there, and um, how I had the power station set up previously, where all the oil was, and how. That was supposed to be a mega factory that was built over those waterfalls. It's hard to see it. Look at all those crates. Oh, jeez. Crates everywhere. This is just because I'm like trying to get rid of material and there's just crates everywhere and then my inventory's full. <laughs> Look at that. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, oh, this is my previous power station. So I use this. You'll see in, in my most recent save now that there's like a... Where I have power set up. Because there's water over there and then there's coal at the back end of there. But you can see how my belts operate right now. These are belts that I was pulling from all over the place. In the process of wrecking everything down. But yeah, this is my first save. Just belts everywhere. I try to make them as neat as possible, but this was to get quartz, I think. It was quartz and all the other stuff that was around. Here you can see the quartz. Iron. Quartz copper. Um, but we can go towards can go towards the factory over here. Yeah, so these belts went across the area. There's a whole bunch of stuff there. Look at this. It's weird coming back to this, knowing that I built this. You know? That's a tip. Like if you want a tip about moving around quicker, even in the early game, when you're still kind of slow and you don't have the legs, you can just crash jump. You're a lot quicker. All right, so I thought I was pretty smart with these belts the first time I did it. So the belts actually surround, they go top to bottom and they carry different items. See here. They carry different items and they're supposed to go to manufacturers and assemblers in order to create the things that we need right so we got like steel and stuff coming in there's the cords coming in this is like input belts Caterium, i think is around here somewhere as well Caterium's coming in from the back oh there it is yeah so the Caterium gets fed all the stuff gets fed down it goes into like your initial layer of constructors and stuff like that. See, those used to be my coal vats. 
we go. So these are all vats. Yeah, and then just like a gradual drop, everyone. And then there was an overflow, yeah, that went into sinks. And oh yeah, this is the resource sink program. So anything that was overrun, each manufacturing belt like had a resource overrun. So, and like I said, oh yeah, you can see, yeah. residue package, where, now I know that you can use heavy oil residue for different things, I know that before. Um, anyway, so now you've got these things, and you can see here, because of the update, like there's no floor holes or whatever, so I had to make holes in order to have my belts and everything come through the floor. Um, but here you can see how the manufacturing system was set up, it was all like kind of in a line. Which is the way I still do it now. Um, but it was focused on like these circular belts that were in here. Anyway, so this is the old factory. And this is where I made most of my space, space elevator parts all the way up until, until I can't remember. I think it was until the final final stage. And then I wanted to start making the big factory. So let's go back to the other one. Where's that game? Bigger factory. Let me know if this is entertaining for you guys. Boop. All right, 9.09 folks, that's the time in the morning. 9.09 on a Friday in September, 2024. All right, so you've seen this factory so far, you've seen the power station. So this is where that previous factory was. Right? Um, so what we'll do now is we'll get the fuck out of Dodge. I'll take you to the main factory. Watch out that we don't get slammed by a train here. I used to have a little cart, like a factory cart. I don't know if I've still got it. Here comes the train. No! Yeah, the train thing was like, it was pretty cool. Like I had a train track that went along the cliffs. That was the one that delivered all the coal. It would pick it up from different locations. Oh yeah, that's a lookout platform over there, far in the distance. And this particular spot here was supposed to pick up all of these ores. So you remember in the previous build, like you saw those ores coming in. So they were supposed to come into this building, then travel up to this station and then get delivered to the main factory, which is what we see in the distance over there. And this was going to be the mega build. So you can see the space, the space elevators there. Yeah. So it was phase four for the space elevator. And that's when I decided to shift everything. And like, because my brain is all over the place, like I generally, <laughs> I think of too many things at once. And I have so many ideas and I don't know which to execute on like straight away. Um, I end up doing weird things like this. Right. So one of the things when I was in the middle of building that big thing, I was like, I wonder if I can build like a concrete factory here. Um, and that's what I did. <laughs> I built a concrete factory. Just because there, I think there was like three or four normal nodes in this area. I was like, yeah, let's make a concrete factory. That'd be cool. Um, and then we can send that off. But I was like, I'm, I'm making like so much concrete. It doesn't matter. So this is, yeah, also unfinished factory. 
So this particular world, you won't find a lot of finishing. Like there's some design details and they're cool, but like more of the finishing happen in my other save. There you can see like my miners are still outside. Um, all of these like things like the sink and whatever it is, all of the stuff is still outside. There's a couple of like aesthetic details like these things, you know, trying to like show that something is supported by something and um, that kind of vibe. But yeah, so if you look here, there's no real way to get up there. I think there was a ladder somewhere. I can't remember. Was that inside here? No, it was just an overlook. Yeah, I thought I'd put a ladder somewhere. Anyway, oh, there's the ladder. ladder. Okay. So, yeah, I got distracted and then I built that and still didn't finish that. I really need to learn how to finish this. Stuff. I think it's just because it always feels like there's more that you have to do. And so sometimes it can get overwhelming. Uh, but anyway, so like this, you can see now, this is the, the large factory. This would have been, if I had carried on playing the save, this would have been like the home location for the mega factory. This one had a little bit more detail in it. It had a little bit more kind of like consideration for aesthetics. Like this big round outcropping here is located around a big gas rock. Um, so that was meant to be like a conservatory or a terrarium of sorts. We can actually go in there. Oh, so like this is the train station. So when the train came in, it would drop everything off in here. Um, and the one thing I can't remember is I started taking this apart as well and changing it. You can see these are like terrarium type deals. Start a building. Here's one that's enclosed. Pretty cool. Kind of like going to an art gallery. Having yeah. things preserved this way. This is the train station. It's where the train would come in, offload all of its gear. Oh, and I had different trains, yeah. So they'd be coming from all over the place. Drop off all of its gear, that would get pumped upstairs, and I don't know if this save if I've broken down the organization upstairs or Yeah, I think I might have broken down the organization. Um Yeah, I've started shifting stuff around. So you can see there's like more details. So I wanted to get like a little bit more depth on the walls and stuff and This was a change up. So this is how they were supposed to look. This is the big orga organizational set of belts. But they all came in from the trains and they would split off. So I had these like split systems that would um, smell. Uh, so stuff would come in from the trains and from below. So there's like coal and stuff below as well that I would store and use for like steel or whatever. But everything would come through here from the trains that would go onto these belts. And then these belts would then sub-organize. So like we'd use smart splitters here to tell what, what needed to go where. That would then be distributed downwards. So there's some examples here. Like here. So here you can see like whatever was coming out here would then be distributed downwards. There we go down to the outside. Um let me go and find a different one. One that still has like a thing attached. Yeah, okay. So this would go down, 
And then we go to the outside. Uh, like this. And then there would be a resource sink here. Right? And oh, the resource sink was on the opposite end. So it would come down on the outside, then come in. And then be distributed into these um, containers. Right? These storage containers. And once the end storage container was full, that was meant to go to a resource sink. So you can see here, there's a resource sink right here. Um, yeah, so once the containers are full, it would overflow to the resource sink. But then these containers, because there were so many of them, you'd have, I think it was like 17 outputs. So you could do as much manufacturing as you wanted, but like you'd also have stacks and stacks of containers that were full. And um, so hopefully you wouldn't run out um, that quickly. And the idea was that this would be like a massive, massive manufacturing plant. Um, and if we go upstairs. So this would have been the storage area for everything. So you can see like, I think there's 87 manufacturable items and like resources and stuff in in satisfaction i think it's 87 there might be a little bit more but that's what this is so this is like 87 banks or 90 banks of storage massive massive storage that you can just like keep on adding to um in order to like have this mega factory and then the actual manufacturing floors would be floors like this So these would be like the manufacturing floors. So if you wanted to make something, whatever you were making would be over the top of the storage area that um, that part would be stored in. I don't know if I'm making sense. So like if you were bringing in resources, um, those resources would then be just like, let's say into the storage area. So you'd have the storage area, then you'd have Storage area, and a, a, like storage area, logistics, and then on top of that, so you'd have like this kind of square sort of tower that would deal with a single resource or a single type of object. Right? So let's say, for instance, um, the copper wire. Right? That it all be done in one thing, like here. What we're making here. You go, deuterium ingots. And those would be shipped straight down. Um, and that I also used sushi belts in this, I think, was the deal. And the idea was that the whole thing was supposed to be enclosed. So all the logistics was supposed to be enclosed into like a rooftop structure. So we'll have a look here. So they'd come down the central channel, everything would connect to that and go out of that. But you wouldn't be able to see any of the logistics. The only stuff you would see would be the storage. Right? And so like here, yeah, this would be the smallest part of the logistics. That, you would see. that was the idea. Um, and then beyond that, there would be like a bunch of things inside that channel. That was the concept behind it all. Um, and then also between each square, you'd have these like hallways. Okay. And then you'd be able to see, you'd be able to check in on like your storage and whatever it is. Um, but then also like the parts themselves would be on sushi belts. You can see here, this is part of that sushi belt. And then parts would be dropped off and whatever part there was, it would go onto the sushi belt and then get delivered to its container. And so like, if you imagine each set of storage being its own thing, let's see if it's, yeah. So this is um, reinforced iron plates. 
So this whole storage area here for reinforced iron plates, just above this would be its logistics, and then just above that would be the manufacturing for reinforced iron plates. They would come down through the logistics floor and come into this and feed onto this belt and then get delivered into the storage container. If you get my drift. That was the idea. Anyway, so this is like that big factory. This I spent, yeah, like I said, 500 hours on. Never really got around to finishing it. It always just felt too big. Um, the mods made it a little bit easier because you could like... You could really like stretch things out and like you could make like a hundred storage containers by yourself in like a couple of seconds. But nowadays, um, that smart mod I don't think works anymore. I tried it a couple of times and it doesn't appear to function properly. Um, anyway, so now we're going to go on to a more recent save, which is Remalerium. Also 530 something hours. <sighs> Excuse me. Also 530 something hours. Let's go. So this is after like I got back into the mega factory build, like around about last year sometime, and I was like, ah, I don't, I don't know if I want to carry on doing that. Let me just start again. And so I started this one. Which design-wise is a little bit better than the previous one, a little bit, because I started thinking more about materials and like more details about like the surfaces of things. So here we can see this is like the Green Valley spot. This is that big. I think this is the big gas rock. Yeah. So yeah, this is the big gas rock that normally had like a, a worm on it or something like that. Um, so we can kind of give you like an overview of where we are. So these are those same iron nodes. Right. But here you can see I'm starting to enclose things. I'm starting to like be more considerate about how I want things to look. How are they going to connect? Like what are the logistics going to look like? Um, You know kind of getting there but like i've made the same mistake in every single save so far so the mistake that i've made is that i try to rush the milestones so instead of automating the parts to get to the milestone what i'd do is i'd rush that and then i'd either make it myself at the craft bench or i'd just use tickets to buy it right so um i made some of that mistake myself here as well because like in my mind i'm thinking well if i can unlock everything then it'll be easier for me just to automate what i need when i need it you know and in some weird way that like kind of that logic makes sense but it's it's kind of like playing creative mode but then you still need to get the resources you still need to get all the things and whatever it is. um so this is just like random storage of things like when my inventory got full and I needed stuff like I needed to put stuff somewhere so this like storage has moved around quite a bit so this is like kind of like my green valley builds and this is also one of the saves where I started naming things um so you can see over here smithy's ironworks big sign over there all right let me show you so I made these enclosures or miners because I wanted to close them up have something like that that they're inside but not fully so you've got these vent hoods at the top that allow like the miner to like smoke um, and then yeah and then you've got like power across all of these so you just connect it to the outside manufacturers does its thing and um, we've been going to smithy's um ironworks here so this is made off of those those three iron nodes over there, so we can take a walk across there. Excuse <laughs> Iron nodes. So we've got three belts of iron coming out here, yeah, iron ore at least. Actually, the viewing deck. 
bad boys. We're going over there. These are these three normal modes. And then they feed into Smithy's Ironworks. But again, um, there's another node. There's another two nodes, I think, back here. So if we take a jump. Yeah, so there's another two nodes over here that I added to this build. I think these are the impure nodes. I can't remember. But anyway, so we can walk up here. Go over here. And this is where all the kind of... You can see over here, like, part of the logistics is below, part of it is above. Right? So this is like a mix of scene and scene. Um, and what I did was as well, I created these glass foundations so you could see the ingots traveling to their locations. Um, and so the ingots would come up out the floor and come to the machines over here. So these are single stage machines. These are just constructors doing their thing. Some of them are making screws. Some of them are making rods. Um, yeah, some of them are making plates. And you can see all of those parts are coming through here. So there's a buttload of screws. All of that's going through here. And then all of that kind of goes to the floor above, which I'll take you to in a sec. But one of the things I wanted to show you here, and one of the things I kind of like try to do my best in here, was power. And where the power comes from. Right? So... And what it looks like. So here we can see a switch. Um, there's a, a node there. And that feeds into these power belts. For the machines themselves. But it comes out of the pillar. So the way I did it was. I, I think I made like a thing in the middle of the pillar. Oh no no no. What I did was I took it to the top. So these. These things over here, the power runs through these, these pillars. Yeah, there you go. There's a cable right there. Um, and so I spent my time just like trying to neaten that up so that they wouldn't be hanging in the way. Kind of like that. Pretty cool design feature. You know, you come through and you have these switches. And you can switch them on and off each stage. Let me take you downstairs. So one of the things here is there's no access. <laughs> so you have to jump from floor to floor. Um, but here's like kind of, I fixed all of this up, the logistics, the below logistics. So that's stuff coming in from the side over there. It gets fed into, whatchamacallit, these are the other three belts coming out over here. These are the, the ingot belts. So you remember like I had the floor there. So you can see the ingots. Everything's hanging from the ceiling. So this is just to try and keep it up and out of the way. While you're moving around. No real other reason. This is the distribution from the top. So these four belts come from the very top floor. Where the complex, manu well, semi-complex manufacturing is done. And then everything gets stored inside containers behind these walls. Um, and then these belts are overflow belts or outlet belts, sorry. So these are outlet belts that go up to the top to feed the machines at the third floor. Um, and then there's also overflow belts. So these go out to the sinks on the outside so we can have a look at that. It's taking quite a long time to explain all this stuff. It's better but yeah so those belts go up to the manufacturing floor like the more kind of intense manufacturing but like one of the features here is like what i had what i did with this design the way i designed this building and i think like a lot of the time in satisfactory like it's very easy just to design flat square 
because that's the nature of the block that you have. But like what I learned from looking at a lot of like design things and those like, you know, kind of tour videos of places is like you've got materials, you've got colors and you've got like a couple of different shapes and sizes that you can play with. Right. And so you should probably try and do that, you know, break things up a little bit, create some definition in the surface like here. Instead of just having something flat, it goes to flat. Put this pillar in the way, and then you've got some depth, and it creates an, a break in this long, flat surface. And then details. Details like these little fences. Um, you know, the window frames. All that kind of stuff. And, like, just breaking up the surface and giving it little details. The signs are pretty good for details as well. I'm um, using different doors, different materials, that kind of thing. You know. Um, anyway, so this is the storage area. So this is where we could go through into the organizational stuff. It's coming back. This is the storage. So you can pick up your stuff over here. All right. Rotors. Let's see here. Things? Smart plating. Um, yeah, and you get a little craft bench or whatever it is, and maybe something over here. It's just like store some stuff. Little tunnel goes back out to the logistics floor. This one as well. Um, yeah, and then we can go to the next floor. Let's go. So, like I said, <laughs> I haven't built any access yet. I haven't thought about that just yet. I uh, can't access from there. So we need to go to the other side. Alright, so there's a balcony up here. So this is the advanced manufacturing floor. So you can see it's just all assemblers all the way down and so all of the iron that's coming in we're making those basic parts but then we're also making these more complex parts we can go down here we can see what we're making each row and again with the power so you can see the way that the power is handled it comes up through these pillars and then gets distributed across these belts And then there's access ramps across the top bottom as well there's going to be more manufacturing like coming out here but like again then you run out of resources the mass doesn't math properly but yeah so this is all like the belt work that goes down it's so cool to see everything like working and all the lights are green yeah. screws for days son but yeah, so that would be like an ironworks factory, and that's making like a whole bunch, what's it, like seven things? It's making quite a lot. Um, so we can go back, actually go to the top of this. Check a couple of things out. I can show you what the front of this looks like real quick. You can see kind of the detail in the surface. How I handle that see the power nodes on top and um, this motor factory over here is one of my most recent additions and um, so is that factory over there so this factory that one over there that one is a concrete factory and I'm trying to use as many nodes from the area as possible and um, we can go over to that one in a second um, that's a motor factory. So there's a couple of like metal nodes, I think, uh, or not metal, iron nodes that are impure. That are over there. I started building these roads as well. Like I'm not, the road thing is weird to me. Like I don't understand, like part of it makes sense. Part of it doesn't make sense to me. Like I hate how it has to be over the top of everything. 
Um, anyway, so this is the motor factory. This is the kind of like over the top belt. This belt runs over the top of the factory and actually comes out the back. Distributes parts to these containers. Then, then once the containers are full, they go, they go underground. Yeah, so they'll go underground here. There's an underground belt work here. And then they get distributed to these truck stations. Bringing the secret sauce. Um, yeah, then they get distributed to these truck stations. And each station has a different part. Other flow parts go over there. This kind of one, this awesome sink is kind of pointless. Because there's one over there. But anyway. So I'll take it into this factory. Let me just give you a walk around the complex. So these are like the iron nodes that I think are just their impure iron nodes. Maybe one or two of them are normal. Okay. Anyway. Another MPO iron node. Everything's getting pumped out. This belt across the top here, this is coal. Uh, another two MPO iron nodes, I think. So it's just trying to like create structure. Roots and things. Um, this coal node comes from that pure node. That's on the side of the mountain. See that coming up across. It's being fed into this motor factory because I think we needed steel parts for this. I think this is, a, is this another steel one? I know. Oh, this is copper. A wire for stators. Yeah. Okay. Right. So this is the the inside. So this is where all the kind of raw materials come in and they get processed as ingots. Real ones, we're not moving enough ingots. Okay. Move those ingots, boys. This is where they all come out and they all go up in these belts. Here into the manufacturing floors. So this is um, logistics. So you can see everything comes out here. And then these are going to be fed into their particular parts of where they need to be. And so I think in this build I try to hide all the logistics as much as possible on its own floor. Yeah. See in and out, in and out. But it's super clean, so it's just manufacturers doing their thing but here we can see we've got some crazy logistics happening over here and these are for the more complex parts so stators rotors type of thing and there's also this channel in the middle where parts go up and down so we can go to the outside i'll show you Yeah, the power in this one, I wasn't like that worried about hiding. I just wanted to get power in. And um, this is, these are the belts that go over the top of the roof, and then back out the front, and then down this, this place here. The reason why there's Zed fighting here is because this is a half foundation, and there's a wall right there. And um, this belt work took a little while to try and figure out. I kept on getting. Um, what you call it, clipping on the belts until I figured out a really smooth way of getting everything working. But I had to rebelt this quite a few times. Um, but here, yeah, these are the parts coming from downstairs. See them? Okay. 
Well, you can't see it because I hit it. So yeah, all the log logistics is hidden and it's all hidden behind these types of things. Um, yeah, so there we go to the outside. Uh, let me see if I can take you guys outside real quick. So those belts have come out the back, go across the top, heat out the front, and then go down there. Then this is just like a little outcropping for our sign. And then here you can see the parts going up and down. This is the bank motors. And that's all. all right. This over there is a steel factory that I did not finish. Ooh, I've been going for quite a while, about an hour. Let me show you the copper factory. Kind of fun. I've expanded a little bit to incorporate wanting to make <laughs> all clad aluminium sheets that just like by hand. So Green Valley Copper Company, here we go. Again, this is our miner in that spot and that all gets fed into the copper factory and each floor is a different floor so first floor is ingots Let's see making a buttload of ingots we split that out into fire into three bins and those three bins feed upstairs those three bins feed upstairs this little bin over here is for me to drop aluminium ingots in so I can make all uh, sheets on this, this guy over here um yeah so let's go up next floor this is where I was experimenting with like blueprints of stairs so you can see this is an actual blueprint and then you just you have a central location the stairs go up and then you build off of that the only problem with it is is that because it's like half um it has to go into the build as well which is kind of crazy strange, I guess. um yeah so ingots going in making wire on this floor uh sheets Cable. So I've started like changing this because I need to build a some sort of resource thing over there that I can distribute it with, like a truck station or something. But again, 1.0 is coming up. So I'm pretty not gonna do that. But we can jump out the window here and I can give you a quick look at what it looks like design wise. So there's a big light across, there's a curved wall. Over there I always show like the things that are being made see and this is what I'm talking about just like switch up the surfaces break up the monotony those types of like design thoughts are the things that kind of help stuff look nice I guess so I really loved that proper factory when I made it I thought it was one of the biggest coolest things <laughs> especially like this like curved wall and this light over here but yeah, so, um, that's, I think those are, oh, the concrete factory I haven't shown you. So the concrete factory gets fed by a whole bunch of different nodes. This is one of them. This belt up here, this is for that concrete factory. Um, and you can see the limestone coming in through there. This is coming out of a cave over here. And this cave is actually fed from the opposite side of this building, but we'll, I'll show you that in a sec. Yeah, everything gets fed across there. This is another lime node. It goes across here. And joins another bridge that's full of lime. So these lime nodes at the back end here, you guys might know those.
there's one there and there's one there and that's feeding into the line belt the idea was to try and take as many lime nodes as possible and put them into one place so we can make this giant concrete factory and again like i said like a lot of the design stuff that i'm working on here is just to break up the surface with detail playing around with things here's another lime node yeah there used to be a road that means up here but now we've got this road. More nodes. These are iron nodes up here. And that's another iron node over there. I'm not sure what I want to do with that just yet. More iron nodes. But then here is the lime factory. The lime node. That was from the other side. That goes across and up. Feeds in behind this iron ore node and goes into a cave right here and then comes out the other side of the mountain right? um, to feed that belt you might be asking why didn't you come out this side well I thought it was nice to hide it in the cave anyway here we go Titan concrete works we dock the idea was to also like have nodes from all over the place like be independent and stand alone but like have a truck delivery dock there the truck would come pick up all of the lime come and drop it off here and then this would be the place because i was making i'm making wet concrete here you can see this is the power distribution this i try to hide power here as well Boom. Oh, this is the view of the concrete being made. Three belts of 780. <laughs> Just pumping out. Uh, I don't know how much that is. I don't even know if I make that much. But here are the refineries. So I use the refineries to make wet concrete because the wet concrete more concrete per limestone ore than just doing regular constructors and so I'm making a, a buttload of stuff 60 per minute 30 per minute makes 40 per minute because like in a constructor I think you only get 15 for 45 there's a lot of concrete coming out this bad boy um, but one of the other things I could show you it's time to stand. Get up from my chair. Go so, down. I'll take you on a tour. Okay. Equipment storage. These are just a couple of storage bins that we can use to like store stuff if I have trees too full. Now you can see the belts. Nice and clean. Look at this bay window. Uh, maintenance. So these are like pipe maintenance for the water. I only had to use six extractors for this, which is pretty cool. This is storage. We'll get to that in a sec. Maintenance. More maintenance. Yeah, so this is that same maintenance. Exit. This is pickup, so this is if you want to haul concrete by hand, you can come and get it here. Um, I need to make some adjustments in the storage here, like because there's this big gap. So I want to move this over so I can kind of have space maybe for a wall or something to separate these two things. You'll see. Um, so these are the belts coming from the other side. This is where all the ores get fed in. Limestone ore. And this is like the storage distribution. So this gets put in there, and then this over here is the overflow. So this would be the overflow belt that goes out into what you would 
or sink. This is the back end of that area. You can see here where all these concrete things are coming in. Where everything gets distributed. Oops. This is more belting. So this is all coming in from a different direction. There's another node over there. But on this one side of the map, there's a couple of nodes. And so that comes in, that feeds into these boxes. Fills them up. And then we just pump out ore. Into all these different places. That gets fed into the machines. Alright. Ba -dum -ba -dum -bum. Look at that. limestone everywhere limestone and concrete limestone and concrete and you can see how these things work again logistics all hidden in the floor below um you know, this guy needs to Anyway, yeah, so then there you go. Logistics floors. And then all of these are fed by different nodes all over the map. This is the actual thing. This is like a, an outdoor storage. This is for a truck station that I was considering putting here. Here's the one node there. And I like to enclose my belts. Makes it feel like the stuff is protected, you know, while it's traveling. Um this node is over here. There's two nodes actually, I think. This factory over here, this is a modular frame factory. Moxie's and modular frame. And this one isn't as interesting. So I hadn't really taken to heart like the idea of like, you know, doing the surface thing, but you can see I started. There were a couple of things here where I try to like detail up the surface, do some crazy things. So here we got a little meditation garden as well. Uh, this is like all of those like um, impure nodes so you're bringing all the ore in from those impure nodes and we're manufacturing iron parts like we were in what do you call it the iron works but these are specifically to make uh, modular frames which i was making at the other place as well but this was just a modular frame factory this is actually inspired by what darren plays um, and so you can see here Rows and rows of things being made. It's kind of crazy that you need so much space for the initial manufacturing, but like for the rest of it, not so much. But yeah, we have overflows of other parts over here, but the main thing is the modular frames. And this one, this factory is actually like, I like the way it's set up. I just wish I'd spent more time like making it look nice. You know? Pretty cool. But we can come up here, go through this doorway. This goes out onto like a back area. I redesigned this factory quite a few times. So that's why I've got all these parts here. Um, but yeah, so these are the nodes. These are outdoor nodes, <laughs> as you can see. This is before I had built the enclosure. Um, and all of these nodes are feeding into this like kind of main belted area below the core. This is like another garden area for picnics, but more 
nodes. So I think in total there's like six or seven nodes or something, maybe eight. I can't remember. You see them coming in. And we can look, walk along here. We can have a look. See how the paths are should be there. Comes in. It gets fed into that. And then all of those things make it's pretty basic stuff. Just nice and neat, really. More storage. Never get enough storage. And um, other things to can like consider is like when something's floating in the air, like it needs support. Consider like putting those types of things in. I don't know why this is here. Something got into me and I made this. But yeah, there you go. Materials, supports, those types of things in closed spaces. There you can see a lot of messing around with the surface details. Um, yeah, so I've shown you that. I don't really have anything else. I don't think. I've got like factories that are. Oh, here we go. This is something interesting. So I found out that you can have a sideways road. So. Watching Total Eclipse, he had um, roads that had like kind of the slant went outwards. I don't know if I've got an example of it or not. Because I think I switched them on. So the foundation, instead of being this one, it would be the inverted one. And then the foundation would be like sloping this way. And so it'd be sloping out kind of drove me nuts I wasn't keen on that because if you um, if you change the material on that to asphalt then it makes the whole thing asphalt right? it doesn't just make the top surface asphalt which is annoying so then I found you could use the inverted corner like this right? it would look nice Use the asphalt, it didn't seem out of place, and then you could use these guys. Build something cool. It's like a barrier. And so it feels more complete that way. To me, anyway, it feels more complete. And therefore, these corners we can. Boom. A little bit of a. Yeah. There you go. That feels more complete to me. And then also, when you've got some space underneath and you're doing edges, it gives a nice detail in the road. This. Yeah. Looks cool. Looks supported. Looks rigid. Looks weird. Um, but yeah, that's a little tip there for you. Um, yeah, so the factories on that side aren't really done. Uh, there's a lot to show you. I've done a lot in 500 hours. I'm also not doing it like really well. I'm not going from like one side to the next. I'll show you the steel factory, the unfinished steel factory. This is one of my favorite logistics floors in the factory. But I need to take the whole thing down because it's on the wrong level. It's like that half a foundation, half a one meter foundation out of alignment. So I need to, need to rebuild everything. But here you can see I was also playing with like surface details, trying to make things work. And, um, you know, breaking out the stairs, doing little notches and cutouts and folds these are the miners in this particular area yeah. 
this all fill, feeds the steel factory but again like steel you need to start like from a base iron because what i was trying to make here was heavy modular frames and um, but this is my logistics floor so production logistics this is for everything coming in look at this and nothing clips <laughs> nothing clips everything works everything comes in everything looks good all kind of neat nothing clips nothing fucks out look at that some storage containers over here with like steel parts this is the overflow that goes out to the sink but yeah just making whole bunches of things no clipping or anything but i love this floor this to me is like this was a really well executed logistics floor nice and tight compact feeds everything that we need um for the next manufacturing this is coal coal comes out from over there like a node up here Um, I've got it split off and making a couple of things over here. This is another outdoor factory, but I'm making powder or something and compacted coal. Yeah, gunpowder and compacted coal. Anyway, let's go back down. Do you remember from the other one? I made a concrete factory in there. Steel parts production. This is all hidden, so you can see. Or the this is steel and iron parts production. But every, all the logistics are hidden there on the floor below. Let's see how well that works out. These are the belts feeding stuff up. I like the idea of like having that. You can see like it's not finished because my brain is all over the place simply logistics so this is from everything that's manufactured this has to go and make parts in order to make heavy modular frames this is a bit crazy so because all the parts are like kind of awkward where they come out now belts need to cross over and do this and do that and this machine needs some and that machine needs some so it was like it's hard to figure out how to make everything work, you know, um, like properly. I didn't really know how to, I probably should have used this floor a lot more, like used more space in this floor to figure that out. Probably would have come out better, smoother. Um, but yeah, and then we can come out to the top here and this is parts assembly again. Not finished. But yeah, making all the parts that we need in order to make heavy modular frames. This is the first manufacturer that ever put on this. So there was the steel factory making heavy modular frames. Now oh, you can see there's stuff happening over there. It'll take a... Quick run over here. And we will jump in this hyper tube and go to aluminium. Which is also not fully automated yet. I haven't got logistics set up for that. That's a blueprint I have. Is um, I made that a blueprint for like ports going from one place to the next because this full trip i think is less than 30 seconds going from one side of the map to the next this is the power station this is also inspired by um what darren plays 
because of those like coal nodes over there. I'm not 100% sure that this was the best idea. Think of what part. See power stations upon power stations. I think there's 15 per row and there's like six rows. I think there's a lot of power stations. But I'm not sure that this is the best idea. Do power out here. I mean, it's cool. It looks cool. Right, and then we can, yeah, so we can go across to... I've upgraded all of these to Mark III Miners. We get as much as we can out of these nodes. <laughs> Doing it. But yeah, there you go. Power Station. So this is the logistics area. Maybe that's what Satisfactory is mostly about, it's just logistics. It's really well executed, neat logistics. Or not. Crazy belt spaghetti. And I had the biggest problem with water, trying to get water up there. This is the water banks manufacturing to try and get all of these things green took forever so frustrating but it seems to be working now and okay now let's go to aluminium production such a boring to me anyway Unauthorized hostility. And um, so yeah, so far this is everything I'd like. This is one of the things is like when if, if you start off in the green valley or whatever it is, all your basic stuff you can handle pretty easily. But anything beyond that, like you have to go pretty far away. And it takes time to get there. Let me just look at it. I've been running for an hour and twenty minutes right now. And we're still not most of the stuff that I've been doing is traveling. The mini factory. Right, so this is the aluminium factory. I also make batteries here. I got my first drone port up there, but I've never actually used it. Um, yet. So this is another 1.0 thing. More planning, that type of thing. Um, more ideas of power. How do you handle power? Hiding it away. And this is coal coming in. So coal is needed for part of the process, I think. Uh, here you go. Refineries. All the refinery stuff. These are making casings. And then there's ingots as well, I think. And this is making scrap. All right, sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid, water, water, water. Here's the battery blender. Yeah, one battery and 1.5 water. Battery's full. Right. 
This is a sulfur node at the top of that. I took out. Uh, there's water down here. A little busy enclosing there. You can see, like most of these, I'm so bad at this. A lot of these factories are just half finished. I think it's like I get to a point where I'm like, oh my god, this is taking so long. And I don't really know what to do with it. And so then I stop. But this is like these logistics here were pretty tight. I remember that trying to do these kept on getting in the way. The thing is, if you don't plan for something, then it's hard to like fit it in with something that's this compact. You know? So you really have to plan your factory from the beginning, like what you want in it, how that's going to work out. Otherwise, what you need is like just <laughs> a massive piece of space. There you go. So I'd normally grab these, take them to the copper factory and then rock and roll that way. Uh, but yeah, there you go. So that's the aluminium factory. <clears throat> Got a little truck that delivers coal. Blue worm. There's a purple one. Like sometimes like you hit just a little bit of an uphill and then it just immediately kills your momentum. It's so weird. Leave me alone. get this all right so we'll go back that's the aluminium factory i haven't got much else out here just this. so we'll leave this area and then we'll go to the oil area i didn't know that there were oil nodes around here when i built this coal factory then I found out they were a whole fucking bunch and I was like, man, I could have used this for something else. So now I'm 1.0, I'm going to spend a little bit of time planning, big time. Just trying to figure stuff out. Okay, so like I said, this is a blueprint. This thing here, so I made a blueprint for that. Upper cannon endpoint there. This thing pumps you so fast. <laughs> so I think the total time it takes is like less than 30 seconds to get from here to back to the main base. Boom. Funny. And the only problem here is like. It's not that easy to get to the Katarium area. What a quick wire it is. So you guys are seeing the Titan works, concrete Titan works. Hopefully this these tours like give you some ideas about stuff. Um you know, this is kinda like my lessons. This stuff. As you can see, like the first one was the Mega Factory. Um, that was very basic. Didn't even do any design work on that. Here I'm actually starting to think about lights, design work, where belts should be, that kind of thing. These factories here, so these were like, I knew the floor that I wanted. And then I was going to build around it, but they've already changed because now I've made adjustments that are better. So I used to have that damn thing and um, that what their players has. I took that out because I wanted to build this factory. Um, as far as power is concerned, so you can see power is now delivered from underneath. 
It'll go like this. Power comes from underneath. And it goes through the floor into the nodes or into the machines. And then this is kind of like delivered across the whole back end of the factory. And so wherever you need it, you can pull it off. Right. Here's all the logistics. This is roof logistics is to keep it off of the floor so it's easy to walk through the factory. I'm like kind of in two minds about it. Some people prefer to see everything. Um, some people don't. Anyway, I'm kind of in two minds. I kind of like this because it's nice and open and neat. Um, and it leaves floor space for other logistics, like getting rid of things. Let's see here. Um, yeah. Just that. Um, at the top here, I think what we're making is, is computers. We're making computers over here. Yeah. <coughs> and so we need like plastic and rubber and all that kind of shit as well. So that's coming in from my, like kind of, I call it the Gold Coast, where all those oil nodes are on the far side of this. That brings in all the plastic and the rubber. We I mean, jump into another one of these bad boys. So this used to be different as well. I've just recently rebuilt this. Um, but yeah, this is when I like figured out residual fuel can use that. Well, like residual oil can use that to make fuel, and then the fuel can power power stations. So I'm using all of that residual fuel just to add or residual heavy oil to make more power. Um, refineries get their own enclosures as well. You can see. Um, this is pretty cool. I got like a little underground thing. And so these belts over here, you can see that they go into the ground. These overflow belts. They go into the ground. But you might say to yourself, hold on. You're pretty close to the ground already. Like what the hell? How you doing that? And so we can come over here and just take a little walk downstairs. And they all come out and they come into the sink. And come down these stairs. And now we've got like a little space here. But we're super close to the water. It would be nice if it was underneath. Like we could have like a submerged sort of thing. You know? But yeah. Oh. Do something about that. Anyway, yeah, so this is underneath. Nice little situation over here. This thing's neat on top. Oh, yeah, this is compacted coal. So I've got another factory over here. Again, crash jump. When travel real quick, especially on belts. Not as fast as my super cannon. Alrighty, here we go. So this is the next factory. Again, like I'm making basic parts here. So here you go, 500 steel, 1200 copper. You know, and all of these. I'm making different things as well. So we're making, what are we making here? It's wire, cable, steel pipe, steel plates, rods, screws, iron plates, concrete. So all of these things, so you can see how much is required just to do like basic manufacturing of other stuff. So I can't remember what I wanted this to make. Was it supercomputers? I can't remember. But like this is the logistics floor for that. It's just all these machines and these belts. 
and see how they're fed. Forwards and backwards. You know? It's like crazy. These ones are spread out a little bit more as well. Like I didn't go as tight as I normally would. But I can't remember exactly what I was trying to make here. But I like the fact that there were pure nodes. So here you can see like my mining setup. Uh, that's a, a limestone node. We can go up and visit. I remember building this as well. I was watching Legion. That limestone node. <laughs> And we can come over here and we can see these other ones. Ooh. Down across here. Over here and then up here. Ooh. Over here. Copper! Yeah. Yeah, buddy, 600 per minute. This is iron. There's the copper as well. I don't know if I made a ladder up there. Probably should. Right, some other nerds. These are the iron ones. I really love these enclosures. Really neatens things up. Ooh, the factory. Look at that. I don't even know, like, I can't remember what I wanted to make with this. There was something specific that I was making that factory for, and I can't remember. What it was but there we go so that was like this is a 530 hour world that i've been working on and like if you consider that i've rebuilt a lot of the things um in this world you know i've taken things apart put them all back together again and like try to do try to work more on the design side of things as i was building something so like if i wanted to plan something out like this factory consider what the design would be like but sometimes you can't think about it up front. You have to like work it out. You have to, you know, kind of build it and then work it out from there. And then you kind of like the ideas start flooding in. But I'm hoping that in showing you this stuff that you guys get some ideas, you know. Um, I can show you my planning world. Which is this prep start two. Uh, 20 hours in. Uh, I think I've unlocked up to tier six. I mean, I'm pretty sure you can do tier eight within 20 hours. Um, but this is just me like trying to like figure out how I want to play the next mode. I needed to like get to grips again with the, like the introduction of these parts and what I want to unlock first, you know? Um, so you can see those, the nodes in the back here, like the original nodes, these are the iron nodes iron ore nodes these are the ones that in the previous save was making smithies ironworks um but yeah like my focus in this one was get foundations as quickly as possible um upgrade your miners as quickly as possible and get your logistics part up as quickly as possible so you can see i've got blueprints need to go in we need steel, cable, and frames. So everything that I need up until like n not very complex parts, but like there are some parts here that are like relatively complex that I can grab. Oop, forgot I don't have a jetpack. Not yet anyway. Oh, and that's the other thing you want to unlock quick as well is these little leg things. 
Um, so yeah, these things. Blade Runners. Those things are awesome. This changes life for you in this game. Module frames. Then concrete. Over here. So you can see here, like this is not well planned out at all. I just like I did it as I needed it. Um but I did the same thing I did with that other factory, which is just a massive open floor of manufacturing. So this would be some this is like your starter factory. This would be you start creating things and like it'll make things in small quantities before you get crazy. Yeah, blueprints ready for launch. Okay, there you go. Um, this is where is the rest of this? Oh, here we go. So this here is the biomass kind of like manager. So when you pick up biomass like leaves, for instance, or wood, you can pop it in there. And then it manufactures and makes this biomass, pumps it out here, it goes over here, makes solid biofuel. And the solid biofuel was for these guys. I mean, this is what I had running to get started. But now what I have is the coal. The coal! I was surprised, like, I never really knew this, but, like, you don't need a lot of coal to run these things. It's 15 coal for, like, 75 megawatts. Which is pretty cool. Um, and so these things, for what I have right now, making the stuff that I have, like, I only need six of them. Um, and this is another reason, like, why you want to upgrade your belts as soon as possible. It, you can see I've got Mark III belts here. It's just to try and navigate having to use multiple belts to get to the point that you want to get to. The higher speed your belts, the, the, the neater you can make things. So yeah, there you go. That'll be my starter. So that's after 20 hours. Made all of this. Almost completed phase three. Well, yeah, kind of. I haven't actually put anything together to make the motors or the direct, not the direct, just the adaptive control units. Yeah. So that's not a lot. There's not a lot tapped in the world, but you're already pretty far in the realm of like manufacturing. I mean, this stuff takes time. You gotta wait for things, but overall, that's a new world. That was like to try and test out and see where I'd land. Um, I think for 1.0, I'm gonna try and plan a little bit more about where things go. So that like prep start, the, the last save that I showed you, and um, that's kind of like a test to see where I can get um, once I started doing things. And after 20 hours, if I can build something that's stable and then can get me pretty far in the world, I think I think that'd be useful. Um, but aside from that, um, I do have a Steam list of games that I'm trying to get through as well. So I occasionally stream that. So why don't you go over to Twitch at Newbie USA um, and follow me there so you can catch those games as well. But I'll be trying to stream 1.0 when that releases too. And uh, but before streaming. It's just trying to plan so it'll be this sort of thing where um i'm doing all the initial startups trying to unlock all the, the the belts and everything that makes life a little bit easier um and that'll be the starter factory and i'll try and put a lot more thought into that to have like things 
aesthetically look good and try and plan them out in a world that I want to connect with like trains and all this kind of stuff. I've seen some beautiful saves on there. So I want to try and do that for my next save. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you got some tips and some of those like um, some of those factories inspired you, maybe some of the design ideas, whatever it is. I know a lot of the stuff is not complete, but you never know. Anything can spark an idea. But thanks so much for watching and enjoy your weekend.